on December 16, 2023, at 2 p.m., more than 200 individuals of Chinese and various ethnic backgrounds gathered in front of the Torch of Friendship Plaza in downtown Miami, braving inclement weather, to participate in the second historic protest by the Chinese community in Florida since the introduction of the new anti-Chinese bills SB 264 restricting certain Chinese individuals from buying homes, and SB 846, preventing certain Chinese students and scholars from studying and working in Florida. Chinese individuals from major cities across Florida, including Orlando, Tampa, Tallahassee, Jacksonville, F.T. Myers, and Palm Beach, drove to the location, with some even traveling from South Carolina to show support. The most notable feature of this protest was its ability to garner sympathy and support from diverse ethnic groups in Florida. Representatives from prominent African-American organizations such as NAACP, the largest ladings organization LULAC, renowned human rights advocacy group ACLU, the national Jewish organization AJC, and many prominent Caribbean immigrant communities in South Florida, all participated. Marking a historic collaboration between Chinese individuals and other minority groups on civil rights issues. Another significant aspect of the event was the high level of attention and support it received from the nationwide Chinese American community. Upon receiving an invitation from UCA President Hai Pei Shui, U.S. Congresswoman and Chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus Judy Chu promptly responded, stating, as long as I can reschedule my prior commitments, I will definitely attend to support the Chinese community in Florida. Jean Wu, a leading figure in the fight against anti-Chinese legislation and a Texas state representative, unequivocally expressed, I am going, upon receiving the invitation. Former U.S. presidential candidate and founder of the Forward Party, Andrew Yang, quickly affirmed his attendance upon receiving the invitation. These prominent Chinese-American political figures recognized the impact and oppression brought about by the new versions of anti-Chinese bills in Florida, and their response was one of indignation. As one of the main organizers of the protest, alongside the newly established Florida Asian American Justice Alliance, FAJA, UCA has consistently been at the forefront of advocating for Chinese-American rights in various cases over the past few years. From assisting in cases involving individuals like Xiaofen Chen, Xinqing Shi, Anming Hu, Feng Tao, and Officer Ang Wang, to opposing and ending the China Initiative, to aiding in legal victories regarding the requirement for foreign students to return to the U.S. for in-person classes and the ban on using WeChat, UCA has consistently prioritized the protection of Chinese-American civil rights and fair treatment. UCA believes that the likelihood of improving U.S.-China relations in the next decade or two is minimal and may even continue to deteriorate, potentially worsening the situation for Chinese Americans. A new civil rights movement, specific to the challenges faced by Chinese Americans in this era, is deemed necessary to build a robust safety shield against the further impact and harm that may arise from the worsening social and political conditions in the United States. Florida is considered the ideal starting point for this movement as the state's politicians have presented the community with two gifts, namely SB 264 and SB 846. These gifts have allowed the community to set aside partisan and other differences, organizing itself for the first time in Florida. Seizing this opportune moment, the community aims to learn about democracy, engage in politics, and staunchly resist any new versions of anti-Chinese legislation to ensure the long-term well-being of Chinese Americans in the United States. The event commenced with an opening prayer by an African-American pastor, followed by a collective rendition of the national anthem. It concluded with the iconic folk song of the American Civil Rights Movement, We Shall Overcome. Despite enduring nearly two hours of stormy weather, with attendees soaked by rain, not a single person left, demonstrating unwavering enthusiasm. One of the event's MCs, Hai Pei Shui, proclaimed in English, the rain will not destroy us, and the wind will only lift us up, encapsulating the resilient spirit of the participants. After the storm cleared, attendees marveled at the timely and fitting nature of the tempest, expressing that they would never forget this protest. It foreshadowed a future that is unlikely to be smooth sailing, potentially filled with storms akin to the one experienced that day.
The UCA chairman, Hua Wan, who traveled from Boston to Miami for the event, stated afterward, today marks a robust beginning for a new era in Chinese-American civil rights activism in the United States. The downpour during the protest aptly reflects that the quest for Chinese-American rights, like seeing a rainbow, often requires enduring storms. The famous civil rights anthem we collectively sang, we'll walk hand in hand, we shall live in peace, we are not afraid today, echoes in my mind. As long as we unite and strive together, we will surely welcome the sunshine after the storm. Remarkably, the day following the rainy protest in Florida, at 8 a.m., President Biden issued the first official presidential statement in 141 years condemning the historically infamous anti-Chinese laws. This declaration served as a punctuation mark for this historical chapter and provided immense encouragement for the ongoing efforts of Chinese Americans in their pursuit of equality and justice in contemporary America. Yes, we shall overcome someday.